How did you come up with that name, by the yeah, way? Do, it sounds so German. Uh, it's interesting. There is a story. Uh, my my mother. That was the name that my mother originally wanted to name me. <laughs> Herman. Yes. It really sounds like one of the American films when they feature Germans. Yeah. They're either called Hermann or Klaus. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, I, and then my my grandfather didn't like that name. Um, Lucky you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope there's no Herman in the room. <laughs> So yeah, Stuart is my name, and uh, since I, I did this project, I thought it would be kind of cool to, you know, since it really was my alter ego, to use it as my alter ego. So you, um, you said you, you kind of grew up in that uh, movement, that was the club night that John yeah, Kong was yeah, doing as yeah, well, right? Yeah, in he Toronto. was part of it as well. And um, you went home and then thought, oh, this, I have to sit down and make my own music then? Um, yeah, I mean, like, even before that, I was, you know, I... I get some like cheap like toy Yamaha keyboard and I'd be kind of fooling around with it making like kind of cheesy early house beats. <laughs> uh, and by the time that uh, that movement party was happening, which was I guess early 2000 or something like that, um, you know, like then software was available. Um, and I think if I remember correctly, the first one I got was actually like a free software from a uh, music magazine. And I started just playing around with that. And actually, my first release came out of that software. Um, but after that, I got Cubase, and I started messing around. And I gave some demos to like guys like Kyoto Jazz Massive or uh, Jazzanova. And <clears throat> they really encouraged me and said that, you know, like, it's, it's not bad. Like, you should keep working at it. And I guess uh, I did, and here I am. <laughs> so how did you work with the first release then? You, it was one of those demos that you gave to um a DJ or a record label that you liked, and they said, "Okay." Um, it was. I did it. Um, it was kind of like a, you know, like sort of like a Chicago style inspired house track. And basically, a friend in Toronto was starting a label. I gave him the track, and we said, "Let's do it." And that was it. And okay. uh, yeah, it got decent feedback, and from that. Kind of things rolled on. And you have uh, some of the tunes that are before we get into your production techniques, yep. uh, maybe a, a tune or so that we can listen to from the early days? I guess uh, the first sort of major label for me that uh, I released on was Versatile, Versatile out of uh, France. It's the label uh, that Chateau Flight and iCube and people like that are releasing, or actually they run the label. Yeah, so this is very early stuff. <laughs> you an idea. <laughs> Did you make that on Reason as well? Um, this was before, I think it was Cubase, but I, it was really just like, everything was almost sampled, like even the synths and bass lines, like I, I didn't have any idea how to, you know, I have even soft synth or like a real synth, how to build a ba uh, melodies or like a bass line or whatever, so what I did was actually I just took like uh, samples of, of the notes and then I would kind of arrange it and change the the uh, the uh, notes in the program, yeah. So it was very just not learning by doing. So yeah, you were just, more more or less yeah. playing around. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah. And um, last year, I think you released um, a 12 inch on uh, on Fine Arts under your Herman project. Yeah. I don't want to skip too forward because there's so much basic soul unit um, music. Mm -hmm. But that was really one of the most um, inspiring records that was released for me, at least, last year. By chance, you have that as well? Hmm.
So, yeah, I really like this. And, <coughs> oops. Oops. <laughs> and not only because this night is called CDR, we also encourage people to buy a vinyl. And this was released on a beautiful 10 inch. Um, <laughs> it's just the name stands for Create, Develop, and Release, not necessarily the media. But that's just on a side note. So that's a project that goes more into the dubstep direction? Um, I mean, I guess not literally dubstep, but uh, like a, and definitely a little bit influenced by that. But uh, even maybe even uh, more of an amalgamation of all of my influences, like going from broken beat to like house to techno to some of the jazzier stuff and dubstep kind of all rolled in one. So talking about production, shall we get into Reason? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I think we just need the connection to your oh, yeah. your laptop. Okay. So I don't know if anybody uh, actually had experience with Reason before. Uh, there's basically three windows. You see, the top is kind of like the mixer for each channel. Uh, the metal is like a virtual rack, um, and that's the way Reason works. Is is kind of like a virtual rack. So you, it's almost like you're using different uh, units and synths and stuff. Uh, and you just place it onto this virtual rack, and you can actually, if I open it up and hit tab, you can actually manually uh, rewire everything to your own liking, or obviously you can just uh, do it, uh, it'll do it automatically as well. And the bottom is kind of like the arrangement. Um, so I'll just play this. This is something that's unfinished that I just actually started a couple of days ago and uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> the uh, arrangement window opened up. So you, it's basically um, a little bit like when you look at Logic as well, that you have your, all your different tracks yeah, underneath very, each other and um, very similar in that way. you use it as a sequencer, you can yeah. use all the different plugins. Yeah, so that's less. very, very similar in that range as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I guess the main difference is that virtual rack part and working with that. Um, so is it, you think it's more for people who are used to analog equipment? Um, you, because I mean, just seeing the um, the different plugins so that you can even turn them around, like you have yeah. the machine at home. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't say necessarily. I mean, it, it could be. I mean, I suppose I could picture someone that's into analog stuff that might find it easier to work this way because they're familiar with it. If they were planning, I mean, maybe they're doing traveling, they just want to work on some ideas or something. So first, like I try to come up. Either, I mean, it's, it's different. Sometimes I come up with a beat first or a sound or a melody or something, but. I find the longest, the hardest part for me is the actual melody um, because, I mean, playing around with sound takes a while too, but uh, for me it's like the important part to me in the song is like the melody, it, it's what gives it its, you know, like soul for, for me and so, I, you know, like I take a lot of time trying to figure out melodies. I don't, I'm not musically trained so I'm just kind of plucking away either on a, a MIDI keyboard or just on the keyboard itself. and. So I get that figured out, and then I start. So you think the melody is more key than um, actually having the best sounding kick drum? I think like once you have the melody, and then the way you kind of like uh, manipulate the sound really gives it kind of like the final product. So coming from analog equipment, you also say that it's very important that you kind of keep that spirit of you just said that uh, the plugins usually make it really easy for a producer to work, but mm -hmm. the sound is sometimes not the best. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, um, so then for reason, like example, you can see here, you have the subtractor synthesizer, and then you have this, which is like a distortion unit. Um, and then if I scroll down the side here, you can see that uh, well, these are like all the different sort of synths and drum machines that are in reason. And then you have the effects, which is like the equalizer, compressors, uh, distortion, uh, like all that sort of stuff, reverb. And so Scream is the one I use a lot. And uh, yeah, really like kind of, and then mess around with the synthesizer itself. And then in the end, kind of mm -hmm. find the sound that I like. Yeah, yeah that's just, uh, so when you start a track, you, um, 
you don't really have a particular rhythm that you say, okay, I start with a beat and then find the melody. It sometimes it's the other way around as well. Yeah, like um, you know, rarely actually do I ever have a melody in my head, and then I'll do it. But it's more like just messing around, and I'll come up with a melody or a sound when I'm doing that. Yeah. So it can also happen that you're lying in bed at night and you th have the ultimate melody in your head and then you just yeah. have to start your yeah. gear? The, the most creative hours are somewhere between like 12 to 3 a.m. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shall we stick with this tune more or...? Um, yeah, I could sh kind of show how... I mean, basically now you just have like uh, <clears throat> the rhythm, the sort of notes, and then uh, you just kind of, you know, like I just kind of play around with the different parameters. Uh, you know, the, the resonant, the frequency, and then like the LFO. Until I kind of find the sound that I like. Uh, here you can hear it without the distortion. So once I add that, it kind of just makes it punchier. So there's, you know, like different types of distortion. So now um, they have a couple of drum machines in uh, or uh, drum units sort of in reason. But sometimes I kind of like to just mess around with the synthesizers to make the kick drum because I'm, then I'm not using preset samples to do it. And you can kind of, you know, just make the sound that you like. Yeah, just kind of starting with a sound and then just kind of keep tweaking it till I find the one I like. And, mm -hmm. and then after that, uh, just sort of do the arrangement. Yeah. How many percent would you say you give out as demos of the tunes that you are actually working on? Probably like 10%. <laughs> 10%, really? Yeah. I mean, well, you see all these, they're basic probably just like a couple bars I'm just you know like jotting down ideas um, and then the ones that I really like I'll just bring it further so out of mm -hmm. out of these yeah probably only like 10% okay so many tunes but really like only a few kind of make it into the final stages so mm -hmm. it's I think it's kind of like that because you want to explore you want to kind of just you know like don't don't kind of like stop yourself and say ah oh, this doesn't sound good just do it uh, get get the idea down you might come back to it later you might not but uh, just you know mess around and mm -hmm. <laughs> i noticed that most of your tunes have a very analog and organic feel to them yeah do you uh, what's the theory behind that for me it's kind of like that's just uh, i mean maybe it's because it's the sounds that i grew up with it's what's in my head and so it's what comes out um, I, I also feel like that, you know, like if you're doing digital production, it's not, you know, absolutely necessary that it has to sound digital because it's, you know, you got the wide range of spectrums of sounds that you can use. Uh, it doesn't have to sound clicky or it doesn't have to sound like, you know, it doesn't have to be like choppy samples or so it's really up to you what you want to do within that spectrum. And that's, that's just the way it comes out for me. But do you use a lot of distortion then to make it a bit dirty? Yeah, yeah, yeah? yeah definitely do. What's the next release that's coming out? Next release, um, ah, <laughs> there's someone in the audience here, uh, Jorn, who has got a label called uh, Moody Heights. Mm -hmm. um, and there will be a release on there um, coming soon, I guess, in the next month or so with a remix by, uh, is it called Un Untitled Dub or something, the, the remixer? Northern Heights. Northern Heights. Okay. okay. You haven't heard it yet. I, I heard the remix and, and I, I, I do like it. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Um, you recently released uh, an EP on Dolly Records from yeah. uh, Steffi. How did you feel about uh, the remix from Shit? The one thing I love about it is because it's, it is so different. Like yeah. the stuff that I was doing was kind of moodier, you know, and uh, his was just like pummeling, like really mm -hmm. heavy. And it was kind of great because it was a totally different take on it. Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of tell where the elements came from, but it was so different. And it was also good because it opened up the EP for, I think, a different audience to appreciate exactly. it. Yeah. 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 OK, thanks. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks I for guess having me. We um, have to keep going. There's also that much coming up. Yeah. We have uh, a short break so everybody can um, get a drink, go to the toilet. And then uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes with Henrik. Okay? <laughs> <laughs>